Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a sun-kissed Donnybrook Stadium here in Donnybrook, Dublin 4 for today's AIL Division 1B-1A promotion semi-final between Old Wesley and Gary Owen of Limerick. We are set for an absolutely cracking game in store here today and we've both sides out warming up at the moment. Conditions are near perfect gentle breeze sun is high in the sky and it is absolutely brilliant conditions here for rugby sadly i'm ensconced in the stand up here in donnybrook on the gantry and it's rather chilly and shadowy up here i wouldn't mind being down pitch side today but again we have a great crowd in for this game uh, but of course before we start we have to pay a few bills so we're going to have a word from our sponsor of course without their generous support we wouldn't be able to bring you these streams week in week out every interaction every innovation Every connection. Every little thing we do at PTSB is built upon a better understanding of you. And it all comes together to create a banking experience that's altogether more human. Altogether more human. Again, a huge thank you to our title sponsor today, PTSB. PTSB, all together more human. Make sure you download the PTSB app today and visit them on ptsb.ie for more information. Again, we do thank them for their loyal sponsorship this year. Without them, we couldn't bring you these match streams for free every week. And of course, we have our highlights as well every Monday. Folks, and again, while I'm here, if you could be very kind as to give us a follow, hit that little bell on the top corner of the screen if you're watching on a laptop, PC, or a mobile device. It really, really helps us bring these games to you for free every day. As you can hear in the background, 
right underneath me here, Gary Owner getting right into the thick of things with their warm up device, warm up, hitting bags right now. We're going to go through the teams in a moment, but again, these these sides finishing, always finishing second in Division 1B, and Gary Owen finishing third. That's why we're at home today in Old Wesley. But again, absolutely phenomenal scenes. Huge noise here below me as Gary Owen head back into the sheds after the warm-up. Wesley still running through theirs up on the uh, clubhouse side of the pitch. Gary Owen now gathering in a group, as we can see. Slowly walking back into the pitch. Sorry, into the sheds as Wesley are still going through. Gary Young heading a couple of minutes early with nine minutes to go, eight minutes to go here to kick off. But, uh, and of course, just a word today about our, ref our referee, Daniel Carson of the Ulster branch of referees, ably assisted, assisted by his ARs, Dermot Blake and Kevin Beakey of the Leinster branch of referees. So, again, a vastly experienced refereeing crew here today for this semi final. Of course, as we said, these teams are, have met each other twice in 1B already this year. Uh, first meeting of the year was on the 4th of November, where Gary Owen were at home and came out on top in a scoreline of 18 points to 12 over uh, our first 15 here in Old Wesley. And of course, both sides met only a few weeks ago, on the 2nd of March. It nuts to think it was only four or five weeks ago when we were shoveling snow off the pitch on the 2nd of March to get the game played and now it's been played in glorious spring sunshine here in Donnybrook and of course on that day Wesley came out on top 21 points to 11 so not much separating these both these teams this year and speaking of separating both these teams we'll have a look at the teams today and how they line up of course as this is a playoff game if you opt to have three front row forwards on your bench you get to have 23 in your squad and both teams have done that today so that's why it looks a little different we have a few more names today so we'll just get through it now or wesley the starting 15 at one harry noonan at two irish under 19 player stephen smith at three the vastly experienced cronin gleason our captain reuben pym at four at five another irish under 19s and under 20s player Billy Corrigan at 6 the man in the red scrum cap Cahill Kelly at 7 Josh Pym at 8 Will Fay and again as I always say huge engine on Will Fay he'll be going till the very end till the wheels come off at 9 Ben Stevens. Ben are his first year with us here and we know we've got a lot of family down in the southern hemisphere watching today so we'd like to say hello to them and hope you're enjoying the streams at 10 over a hundred and well over a hundred AIL caps for the club, Ian Cassidy. At 11, Owen Murphy. Owen breaking his way into the team towards the latter part of the season. At 12, Owen Deegan. And 13, Alex Malloy, the hot stepper. At 14, Nathan Randalls. And making his second game back from injury is, is another Irish under 20s extended squad player, Tom Lark. The replacements bench today are Kieran O'Shea, Sam Kenny, Rory Duggan. David Matier, Sam Pym, Bill Corrigan, Keith Kavner, and of course Andrew Vincent continuing on the lineage of the Vincent dynasty here. Again, another flying winger who punches well above his size and weight, just like his dad. We'll now have a quick look at the Gary Owen team for today. Again, vastly experienced at 1A level and, and, and representative level all the way through the Gary Owen side. At fullback and a former Irish universities, fullback and captain Colm Hogan. 14, Colm Quilligan. 13, and captain Brian Fitzgerald. 12, Gordon Wood. 11, Dran McNulty. Oh, sorry, Oren McNulty. At 10, Kevin Langan. At nine, the vastly experienced Neely Cronin. At one, George Haddon. Two, Max Klein. Three, Oshin Carney. Four, Geronimo Usp. Five, Keen Hurley. Six, Des Fitzgerald. Seven, Jack Daly. And the bruiser, Donica Byrne, at eight. On the bench today for Gary Owen, we have Dean Fanning, Mikey Vale, Dara McCarthy, Kevin Seymour, Sean Renanson, Jack Oliver, the vastly experienced Jack Oliver on the bench. 22, Jack Delaney, and 23, JJ O'Neill. Both teams are starting as 
presented today on our match program and they're both in the sheds and while we wait for them to come out we're going to have another word from our sponsor and again with huge thanks to Permanent TSB we would not be able to bring you these streams for free week in week out without them The new online mortgage portal from PTSB will get you moving. Start your application, track your progress, and talk to us when you need us. Bringing the best of technology and our people together for a mortgage experience that works for you. PTSB. Altogether more human. Again, thank you to PTSB, our title sponsor of today's streaming. PTSB, altogether more human tech. Check out their app and their website, ptsb.e, for more information. Okay, folks, we're waiting on both teams to come out of the sheds here today. A sizable crowd here in Donnybrook. The sun is out. Uh, lots of activity. We had our VI rugby team uh, warm training this morning on the back pitch. We have our touch team have a side over from the UK and they're playing those on the back pitch as we speak. And of course, we must mention our Colts. Our Colts winning 31 17, the Mooring Cup final last night over. Uh, Railway Union's first 15, so of course the Colts, our old forts team here, beating Railway Union's first 15 in the Moran Cup final last night, so well done to Chunk. And of course Vino, who's on the bench today, coaching there, their first season coaching together, and getting a little bit of silverware. So now we have the masses assembled around the door, and we're just waiting for the players to emerge. Again, I can't underestimate the weather here today, folks. It is absolutely beautiful spring sunshine. Uh, a huge, huge difference from six weeks ago when we were all snuggling show at half eight in the morning to clear the pitch so the game could go ahead. Here we have Shannon now being led out by their captain, centre Brian Fitz, coming out to the park. Again, a sizable contingent from Memory Cup supporting today. Again, whoever you're watching from, do drop a do drop in the comments. Let us know. We know we've got viewers in Australia, New Zealand, Limerick, Canada, United States, all over the world. Just do drop a comment in if you're watching online, and uh, let us know where you're where you're watching from. Always good to see. And here we go, Ruben Pym being led out. Leading out the team here. Not quite sure who's on ball boy duty today, but Ruben now leads out the side. Followed by our match referee, Daniel Carson. All right, folks, we're about to get underway here. Was here kicking off, playing into the back defend. Ian Cassidy gets ready to get us underway. And let's see if we can get the scoreboard working and the clock going as well. So Cassidy with the kick, it's pretty shallow. It's gathered by the number four, Geronimo Yusp of Garion. Neely Cronin digs it out. Plays his forwards. Billy Corrigan already looking to get them all, holding them up. Carson says release. Cronin now looking for the box. A slight dummy there, but referee says no, it's okay. Lark now coming in to take this ball. Lark takes the security in the air, but straight away he's met by Yusp. This time it's Carl Kelly. Big hit there by the number six, Des Fitzgerald of Gary Owen. Lark gets to the first tackler. Ben Stevens plays Will Fay. Will Fay nowhere to go there. Quasi a little bit narrow here. Plays Cronin Healy out the back door. Great tackle, but it's off the deck. Cassidy sends it deep. Colum Hogan's underneath this. Hogan looks to counter up the far side, the tennis court side here. Yusp again, at first receiver. He's been busy in the opening seconds of this game. 
Oh, that's a silly penalty to give away. Stephen Smith, a little bit, just a little bit trigger happy there for the young hooker. Coming in from an offside position, it's going to be a penalty all day long. Gary Owen looked like to go down the line with this. Fitzgerald just looking for a bit of confirmation and clarification from the referee. Oh, it's going to be... Oh, a bit of retaliation and it's overturned. Oh, offside, he's saying. Offside. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. So it was a push, retaliation after the initial offside. So Wesley now, six, seven metres out from the Gary Owen line. Well, within two minutes here, we've got a great attacking position for the forwards. So let's see what they bring. They look like they're going full. Screams of weight as our captain, Ruben Pym, is tying his shoelace, coming in late. But where's your full here? Josh Pym at nine. Pym gathers the cleanie. Wesley on. He's getting them all going. It's still moving forward. Pym has it at the... No, Stevens has it at the base. Stephen Smith has it at the base. He goes in, he looks. What's the referee saying here? Referee saying it's held up. Little, no, knock on. Knock on by Stephen Smith. A little bit of premature celebrations from the crowd here. So Gary Owen now will have to clear their lines from five metres out. So well, st they stopped that early mall. Wesley didn't get the momentum going forward and they had to rejoin and go a different direction. So it was good D there by Gary Owen. Neely Cronin gets ready. Kevin Langan has Oren McNulty right in his inside shoulder. So will it be McNulty taking it up? Fitzgerald is also looking in at this ball. Front rows are up, we'll have a reset. So, both sets of front rows get ready to rejoin and reset here. Again, we have McNulty on Langan's inside shoulder, but Des Fitzgerald is also shaping an inside line to maybe take it out a few yards to give a better kicking angle. Wesley now trying to get an early push on. They've got a little bit of a push. Cronin's got to use it quickly. He's held up, he's been pushed back over the line. He may go with the touch here, and he's in touch. Great scrum by Wesley Pack, putting Cronin under massive pressure at the base of that scrum. So Wesley now gets to look to make amends for that line-out mistake the last time. Again, full again with Josh Pym playing the position of scrum half. Smith gets ready to put it in. This time it's Faye at the front. Smith has it at the base, trying to move forward. They're getting a little bit of room, but not a whole lot. Stevens is in there making sure he can get that ball if he needs it. But again, they're still moving forward. The ball is at the base. Yes, yes, yes. Carson says it's a try. Let's see who comes up with it. Cronin Gleeson is getting the pats in the back. It's an opening try by Cronin Gleeson for Old Wesley. Again, they had to work incredibly hard to get that mall going. We have Cassidy now looking to add the extras. Six in from the line of the tennis court side. <laughs> 
Anthony now steadies himself for this kick. Yes, and he gets it. Swung in from right to left. Puts it over, gets the extras. 7-0 here in the opening six minutes of this game for Old Wesley. Great kicked in ball there by our ball boy. It looks to me like One of the young McConnells acting as ball boy. Gary Owen got up and got that. It was blocked backwards. Referee says no. It's a knock on. Two of our under sevens, of course. Young Hastings and young McConnell on the far sideline acting as ball boys today. So desperately unlucky there by Gary Owen. The ball was put into a spot where there was no Wesley player. I thought he knocked it back, but the referee said no. Knock on. Wesley now need to work out their 22 here. Now let's see, can they keep that scrum advantage going? Benny Stevens gets ready to put it in. Carson's happy, he says, let's go. Big shunt on here by Gary Owen. They win the penalty. A little bit of pushing and shoving in there. George Haddon with both hands up saying, who me? It was a follow through on that drive once the whistle was blown. And Haddon put his hands up saying, no, it wasn't me, sir. Gleason won't have a word with Carson over it and he says no. But Carson pulling in Fitz and saying, look, when my whistle's gone, stop the drive. Langan now will put them into the corner here. And we'll get a first look at the Gary Owen line out today. <laughs> Klein goes to the tail, he's overthrown it. But it's scattered by Gordon Wood, the Gary Owen centre. Around the corner to Usp. Knock on. Knock on by McNulty. Or oh, McNulty was moving away from that ball and just knocked it on. Wesley can breathe again, a sigh of relief. But they have a scrum to come now after that last carry on scrum. There's going to be a lot of pressure coming here. here for Old Wesley. Owen Murphy's out wide, nobody else is there. Colin Hogan sitting incredibly deep. Colin Quigley, Quilligan, yes they get on the blind as I thought. Stevens up the tram line, Hogan to chase it, tries to foot to trap it. Ball is bouncing and it's gone out. Straight away Murphy and Will Fair there to mark it so no quick line can be taken. So, straight away, Max Klein gets to make an amends for the overthrow of the first line out only moments ago. Use at the front, it's over again. This time it's tidied up at the tail. Looks like it was Haddon who tidied it up. Carrion now looking to get out of here. Langan steps Pim, takes it up, plays inside, look to touch forward, referee says play on. Lang McNulty playing nine. Big hit there by Cronin Gleason. Oh, 
Langan marshalling his forwards to get in and clean it up. Neely's coming with the box. Player was ahead of the box kick. Referee doesn't say anything. Lark had to go behind him to get it, but deals with it. Does well, he have it now? They've numbers out wide if they can move it. Malloy looks for the 50 22. Does he get it? No. Matter of feet. Matter of feet wide of the mark. Not sure if that was the best option by Malloy. He did have support on the outside. Great stuff, Jer Connor. The boys in Highfield are tuning in today. Great to see having an interest in what's going on in the league. Sadly, of course, they didn't quite make it this year, losing up with a narrowest of margin. So I hope you're all keeping well down there in Woodley Park. Here we go again, scrum time. Wesley leading two on the scrum battles here today. Oh, that's popped at the back. Cronin picks it up, plays Langan. Langan with a pull pass. It's read by Malloy. Deegan, I should say. Deegan reads it. Cronin now plays it deep to Langan. Langan sees a bit of space in the backfield. It's cleared back up. There's Fitz is underneath the captain. Langan takes it himself right underneath me here. Lark does it by the side stop. Puts it in the touch. Right in front of the old Wesley bench. And the subs are on their feet cheering on that. <laughs> so Stephen Smith gets ready to put it in. Noonan gives him the instructions. Will Fay at nine. To the tail to Billy Corrigan, he secures it, plays Fay at nine. Malloy. Turn over. Colin Hogan in on the clean. Big carry there by the six, there's Fitzgerald. Still going. Langan, everybody's quite narrow here except one in the touchline, he spots it. And it's through the hands of the winger, Colin Quilligan. Wow, we're playing an incredible tempo here. And again, it's, it's, it's great to see we've a half full terrace on the far side, we've a half full terrace at the end, a full balcony, and probably a half full stand here as well. I count maybe Maybe a thousand people in the ground here today, unless revenue is listening, then it was only 200. Stevens now, hands on it, boxes it down. Quilligan gathers it, moves infield, plays Colm Hogan. Colm steps out of the first tackle. Langan has it, plays it out long. Des Fitz out in the wing, slips on the Astro. The rook, the rook times here for Gary Owner are absolutely lightning. Big, big carry by the three, Oshin Carney. Pim stands on the referee, says he's fine, he can go for it. Short ball to Yusp. Yusp loses in contact. Kicked through by Gordon Wood, but the referee, Carson, says no, it was a knock-on. I mean, you have to comment on the rook speed of the Gary Owen rook. It is not in there for a second, a second and a half, and it's gone. There are pro coaches out there that would love to see that sort of rook speed. As much needle water comes on as a bit of treatment, we'll just take a break for a second and hear a quick word from our sponsor. The new online mortgage portal from PTSB will get you moving. 
Start your application, track your progress, and talk to us when you need us. Bringing the best of technology and our people together for a mortgage experience that works for you. PTSP. Altogether more human. Back to the action as Benny Stevens gets ready to put the ball in. Referee says reset. Again, a huge thank you to uh, PTSB, Altogether More Human. We couldn't bring you these streams week in, week out without them for free. And again, if you wouldn't mind hitting that bell in the top left-hand corner if you're watching on a mobile device or a PC or a laptop and subscribe, it really does help us bring you these games for free and grow the channel. And of course, you will get notified when our weekly highlights videos are also out. And you can watch back in every try from every team we've played and all of our own tries this season too on the channel. Here we go. Stevens now with the put in. Gary Young get a little shove on, but it's thwarted. Picked at the base. Will face in trouble. Straight away, he had two Gary Young men on him. It's turned over. It was a great turnover there by Jack Daly and Gary Young. Out the back to Langan. Langan plays Wood. Wood looks to step inside. Fitzgerald is there in the clean. Deegan had a shot at the turnover, but they can get it. Ball has gone backwards. Colm Hogan now looking for a bit of room. Lark is on him. Not much room on that far side there for Gary Owen. They need to move it in infield. Langan now pull out pass. Use through the gap. Corrigan with the tackle. He's got to be careful he doesn't give away a penalty here for being offside. He is trapped on the wrong side. Wood. Langan to Hogan. Hogan looks to move inside. Breaks out the first tackle. Breaks out the second tackle. He's got support with him on the wing. Will Fay is there. Oh, last gasp tackle by Will Fay. 10 yards short of the Wesley line. Great work by Colm Hogan stepping out of two tackles there. Hogan, a vastly experienced fullback. Of course, played with the Irish universities and was involved in the Munster setup for a while as well. Some more running repairs and water coming on. <clears throat> Again, when you're in the sun here in Donnybrook today, it's about 15, 16 degrees. So it is nice and warm. And of course, playing on the 4G here, those little rubber balls, they absorb heat and give it back out. So pitch temperature could be up to 18, 19 degrees here today. So the players are feeling it. Again, we're getting ready for a line out here now. Wesley, six, six seven yards from run line. Stephen Smith gets ready with the put-in. Corrigan goes up at the tail, spills it forward. Langan has it, works down the short side, plays Usp again. Offside, penalty. Gary Owen surely will go to the line here. High tackle, I've been, high tackle. Langan now puts it just outside the five. So Klein gets ready to put it in. It's going to be a quick line out here from Gary Owen. This one's secured. They bring it straight down and go to Maul. Ball is at the tail. Klein has it. Line is just short. 
but he gets through. Second by the cherry, he wasn't on the ground. He did very well to stay in his feet, ride that first would-be tackler, and then get over and score. To be fair, Gary Owen have been deserving of that try. They've been up in the Wesley 22, three or four times in the opening 20 minutes. Now Langan will come with the conversion. Probably the same angle and same distance as Cassidy's. Again in front of a fairly full terrace here in Donnybrook on the tennis court side. Flags are up. And it's 7 all here in Donnybrook after 22 minutes of play. <laughs> Cassidy now with the restart. Of course, his last restart was... 10 past the 10. Yusp takes it, knocks it on. Howard Noonan has it, but referee says no advantage. Let's play on. Let's reset the hero scrum. Again, Yusp taking that going backwards into a very strong sun here in Donnybrook. Very hard to do that one. So Wesley now with a scrum, just on the Gary Owen 22. As you can hear, the coaches in the background scrummage first. Get the ball, win it, get it out, then we worry about what's next. Again, the back line are rather shallow here. Deegan, Lark and Malloy are all bunched. Randall's out in the far wing. trapped in there it's at the base Faye to Stevens Stevens to Deegan short line to Lark Lark is tackled Stevens around the corner now to Pim the captain Josh in providing support out the back door by Faye short to Cronin Malloy slips it straight through the gap to Lark Mark. Correction. Owen Deegan, then to Lark, and Lark scores. Great work back down the blind by the Wesley back line. Great try there by Wesley, bringing it back down the short side. A nice interplay with a great line by Owen Murphy, who then fed Lark, who put, the, put it away. Cassidy with a much easier conversion kick this time. Son at his back. <clears throat> Over it goes. So it's now a 14-7 lead here for Old Wesley over Gary Owen with about 25 minutes on the clock. So Langan gets ready with the restart. Coming stand side into the shadows. Goes deep. Lark is underneath this one. Gathers it working to the touchline. Rides the tackle of Quilligan. Corrigan, first receiver. As he's done so often for the Irish 20s in the Six Nations Championship. 
Benny Stevens with the box. Colin Hogan's under this one. He's got Langan in field with him. Chooses to go himself, steps through the first, tackles. Out to Hatton. Hatton with a big collision in midfield. Rides over Cronin. Cahal Kelly's there holding his arm. Wesley down to 14 at the moment due to an injury. High tackle, referee says it's a penalty straight away. High tackle on Donica Byrne, the number eight there. We're just going to have a brief stoppage of play while Cahal Kelly gets his shoulder looked at. After a huge hit he put in on Haddon, who just rolled through it and got over him. The hits are absolutely huge here this afternoon. <clears throat> Ruben just having a few words with Carson, our referee, and getting some instructions in how he's seen the game. And again, more water coming onto the pitch. Again, great turnout here today in Old Wesley. Lots of people back on the terrace, basking in the spring sunshine. It's great to see numbers out at AIL. Playoff games all over the country today. Kyle Kelly's back on his feet. Langan is turning down the shot of the post and is going to the line. Klein is already waiting with the ball on the touchline. Gary Owen may look to go fast here. Short line out by Gary Owen, no nine. It's taken by the second row, Kean Hurley. Ball is crabbing in field. Klein still has it at the tail. It's still going, Klein still has it. This time Wesley are in underneath it. It's there for Needy Cronin. Gordon Wood tries to step on the first tackle and he goes, he's five short here for Gary Owen. They're reloading down the blind. Quilligan should have given it possibly. Haddon at first receiver. Clean out is there around the corner. There's Fitz, chopped down. It's going to be a penalty again against Old Wesley. What? what? Needy Cronin is tapping going quickly down the short side. Quilligan stopped, yard short. Picking and going here. Daly picks and goes. To Klein, Klein's a yard short. Is he over? Carson's having a look. He's saying he's still short. Where's he need to get back on their feet here and reload? He's going to be held up. Referee saying no, he's short. Ball comes out to Gordon Wood. Wood steps. Cassidy makes a tackle. Kyle Kelly's at it, but he's rolled off it. Gary Owen still have it here. The number eight gets ready with Haddon. Haddon takes it. Held up by Murphy. Murphy still underneath it. But no referee says Gary Owen scored it. Let's see who comes up with it. It's Klein. The hooker gets his second of the day. Great ball retention by Gary Owen there in the old Wesley 22. To just hold on and keep working it left to right, left to right, left to right, and then bring it all the way back to the left hand side and eventually climb it over the line.
Langan now looking to add the extras. Just inside the 15. No real breeze to talk of here today, no Wesley. Calvin Langan looks to curl it in, but it just stays to the right of the post as we look at it. And it's a slender two point lead here for Old Wesley with about 30 minutes on the stadium clock. Cassidy now with the restart. Will he try and make the sun work from again? This time Muse secures it thanks to the help of his lifter. Ball is there. Where's the offside? But Neely Cronin did dummy that at the base. Langan now playing with advantage. Deegan shot up, but just shook off that tackle. Penalty for offside against Old Wesley. I kind of feel for Old Wesley on that one because the ball was slow coming out and there was a semi semi dummy by Neely Cronin, but maybe it was slow coming out because Wesley wore offside the rook. Who knows? Kick by Langan. No, not as big as I thought it was. <clears throat> so here we go. Klein under the shadow of the stand. We'll get it going again. To the tail. It's stolen by Faye. Got his hand up there. Billy Corrigan is on it. Where's he now with the ball? Carl Kelly's at first receiver. No. Counter coming here from Gary Owen. Wesley need to be careful, they've got to use it. Ben Stevens still has his hands on it. Went backwards, referee says. Oh, it's getting very messy for all Wesley. They've got to be super careful here. Absolute phenomenal pressure being put on for the box time. Cassidy, of course, the former nine is in himself to box it. Hangs it high, high in the sky. Quilligan has to come in and take it. He's hit straight away by Deegan. Where's he now hunting off that line? Corrigan. Missed the first tackle, but forced to knock on. Just take a minute to hear the crowd in the stand here. Absolutely electric atmosphere here in Donnybrook today. Again. Stevens feeds the scrum. Much better scrum here by Owezzi this time. It's picked and tailed by Faye. Faye feeds Stevens to Cassidy. Cassidy to Malloy. Malloy's got a little bit of room. Back in to Josh Pym. Josh Pym takes it on. Ben Stevens to Cassidy. Through the gap is Lark. Lark, quick recycle. But he's turned over. Oh, he just got behind and Jack Daly was able to spin around and get in and get the jackal. Unlucky by Lark. Had he stayed in his feet, he was definitely gone into the backfield. But Jack Daly did phenomenal work to spin around, get back on side and get that jackal. Few too many penalties creeping in here for Wesley. They've just got to watch the discipline. The referee's very sharp on the offside line and at that breakdown today. Oh, 
So Klein again. Straight off the top, it's... Oh, there's gonna be a card here coming from Will Wesley. That ball off the top was fired, fired at Neely Cronin. Like, they didn't like each other, and Ben Stevens straight through on the hit. I don't think there's any malice in it. Might have been slightly mistimed, but he did get through early and make a hit on the nine as he's passing. I think Ben might be looking at the yellow here. Again, might be a timing issue rather than malice. Referee's calling in his assistant, Dermot Blake, looking to see what he thinks. Of course, all the referees here today are a few panel referees. So all vastly experienced match referees themselves at this level. Sadly, I have no refling today on me, so I don't know what's going on. So he's calling in Ben Stevens. It's a yellow card, I think. Yeah, this time, careless possibly, but. Okay, Wesley, you've got to see out this half with 14 players. So Gary Owen now getting another chance to pump the ball into Wesley 22 and set up a line out. As he stay down this time, look to stop them all straight away. But Gary Owen with a little rumble on. Colin Hogan down the blind. Gary Owen three yards short. In on the jackal of Wesley, they may have it, no they don't. Haddon picks. Klein with him. Des Fitzgerald now looks out at first receiver. They're about an inch or two short from this Wesley line. Still not there, Carson says. Carson's looking, where's the ball? Is it held up? Wesley looking to say it's held up. But they have it. Gary Owen still have it. Offside into his own man, it's going to be a Wesley scrum. Great D there by Wesley. They look to drain a little bit of time out of this scrum and run down the yellow card simbing clock. Cassidy will go at nine. Of course, Cassidy, a former nine for this first side, former club captain when he was nine as well. So there's a, he knows exactly what he's doing back there. Cassidy now with the feed. Gary Owen putting the shove on. Will Fay picks and goes. He's tackled straight away, but he is still on his feet. Carl Kelly there adds the reinforcement. That's a great 10 yards made there by Fay with Kelly's support. Cassidy now looking to box it out of here. Box is high, it's long. Brings it just outside the 22. Great pick and go there by Will Fay. Gary Owen line out. Klein has it at the back. It's not moving. Carson says use it. Now it's starting to move. 
Cronin. Out towards Woods. Steps inside. He's going to make it. Yes, he will. Great step inside by Woods. Beats the Wesley D where a nine normally would be. Finds the hole and gets over. For Gary Owens' third try of the day. And they take their first lead of the day. 17 points to 14. Great try by Gordon Wood. Calvin Langan with the conversion to come. That's half time. That's the last we'll see of this half. And at half time, it's Gary Owen who are winning on a score of 19 points to 14 here in Donnybrook. And also, just at the half, I did see a scrum cap coming off the head of Cahill Kelly, so we may have a substitution out of half time. Okay, folks, go put the kettle on, grab a breather, and we'll hear a quick word from our sponsors. We'll be back with you shortly. Olympic Games and Paralympic Games are fast approaching. We're expecting a lot from Team Ireland. Ireland's hopes rest on their shoulders. At PTSB, we never underestimate what it takes. That's why we support the human behind the athlete. Is Reese ready to take his place on the podium? Can Kelly make history? Paul and Finton, could it be back-to-back -back goals? All eyes will be on Nicole. Can Jordan beat that record? And this is their moment. This is their moment. History could be made here. PTSB, proud title sponsor of Team Ireland. Every interaction, every innovation, every connection. Every little thing we do at PTSB is built upon a better understanding of you. And it all comes together to create a banking experience that's altogether more human. PTSB, altogether more human. We are Old Wesley. We are coaches and volunteers. We are kids of all years. We are designated drivers and honor strivers. We are training day drillers and last minute thrillers. We are big match days. We are early Sundays. We are first to arrive because we live to strive. We are part of rugby's history, chasing the next victory. We are a family in unity. We are your community. We are pounding heart rates. We are lifelong teammates. We are stories told. We are heart and soul. We are glory days. We are every day. We are rugby giants and post-match pints. We are chess proud medal. We are every level. We are mums, girls and dads, and do dare lads. We are sponsors and winners and believing grinners. 
We are here to compete until we are dead on our feet. We are from here and there, tourers extraordinaire. We are power and pace and bruised bone face. We will always thus be the spirit of rugby. We are here because of you and because of your unwavering support. Thank you. 130 years, a club. And again, a huge thank you to our uh, sponsors, PTSB. Altogether more human, of course. As you saw, it's an Olympic year again this year. With the Paris Olympics less than 100 days away, and PTSB are Ireland's title Olympic sponsor for both the Paralympics and the Olympic team. So great to see them getting involved there. And as you can see, we've got some great action out in the front pitch here at halftime. We've got our, our it looks like our under nines out. Playing here at halftime. Great to see on a sunny Saturday. And we've got a few other minis dotted around the pitch, having a bit of kick and practice and catching and running around. So great to see them all get involved at halftime. So again, as you can see, folks, on our screen, we have a scoreline of four, 19 points to 14 at halftime in Gary Owen's favour. And hot in from Shannon, it's Old Belvedere 20, Shannon 8 at halftime. So we'll just wait for the teams to come out of the sheds. And also another score just in here at halftime. We have uh, a score from the relegation playoff. Uh, Queens are 24 points to five up against fellow Ulster club Banbridge. So some interesting results there from around the grounds at halftime. As I just put on my jacket here in the gantry, as I said, it's beautiful conditions out in the pitch. But sadly, I'm in the shade here and it's rather chilly. So Wesley back first of the sheds here at the half. And of course, if you've just joined us, it is 19 points to 14. Gary Owen leading here. And Wesley have about four minutes maybe left in the second half with a man in the bin. Ben Stevens yellow carded on 34 minutes for an ill-timed tackle on Neely Cronin. So just looking to see if I can see any changes here at the half for Old Wesley and uh, I I can't I can, David Moitiers, Moitiers is on. David Moitier is on for Cahill Kelly. And I'll just have a look at the Gary Owen side and see if I can spot any changes there too. And it doesn't seem to be. 
So Gary Owen now with the sun on their backs, kicking down to the Bechtive end. Get us underway here in the second half. Sends it deep. Gathered by Teagan. Sends it back with interest to Hogan. Hogan counters. He's hit by two Wesley tacklers, Deegan being one of them. Fitzgerald out the back. Use hit by Pim, driven backwards. Daly plays it back inside. It's knocked on. But we're coming back for the forward pass. Oh no, we're, he's calling it Wesley knock on. Not sure if I would agree with that one. Again, I never claim to be neutral, just try to be fair. So, Wes, Wes, you now have to defend this opening scrum of the second half. He's not happy with the setup. <laughs> Kelvin Langan is standing at zero with Colm Hogan directly behind him. <laughs> Where's he get the push on? It's out. Cronin plays it towards tackle straight away. Oh, the home fans don't like that. Hogan feeds Woods on the on the wing. Whoa, ball is still in play though. Use straight away. He's tackled by Mutier right under the pitch. Lark with the tack. No, it wasn't Lark, apologies. Out for McNulty. Cronin goes himself down the blind. They have numbers, can they use it? Oh, it's a high tackle again. Tackle by Lark, I think. Again, just two lads upright making a tackle. So Daniel Carson calls in Kevin Beakey, who's on that far side. And we may see another card coming here for old Wesley just as. Stevens is about to re-emerge out of the bin. Referees, of course, and these ARs are in conclave on the 22. Well, he needs to be quite careful here as well of this quick penalty. Gary Owen have moved. Oren McNulty right to the wing, stand side underneath us here. So a cross field kick might be an option. I don't think Wesley have picked it up. So what's going to happen here now? Referee's explaining to. He's going to his pocket. Yellow card, Tom Lark.
So Ben Stevens should be back on in about a minute's time. But Wesley are now down to 13 players for the next minute or so. And now they have to defend a line out, seven, seven from their own line, without a nine and without a full back. Wes, you're trying to bring the nine back on. But says no, you can't substitute. Cronin's at the lines at the base with that. Cronin's looking for it. Plays the inside the woods. Wood steps in to Pim. Pim is now on the jackal. Will he get the jackal? Yes, he will. Great jackal there by Josh Pim. Huge defensive play by Old Wesley. Ben Stevens now comes back in out of the bin. Great work by Des Jackson, the fourth official, manning the line. Okay, we're. I'm looking to see. Now we've got some Gary Owen substitutions coming in. Entering the fray is 18, Darren McCarty. 20, Sean Remington. And 22, Jack Delaney. All coming on. And Wesley are looking to make a sub as well. So I'll find out who's come off for Gary Owen in a second. So off for Gary Owen is 14 Quilligan. 10 of Langan. And and George Haddon. There's some serious confusion here with Dermot Blake on AR on the Old Wesley sideline. And two minutes clicked, kicked off Tom Lark's uh, card as well, hopefully. Smith now with the put in. It's caught at the front by Corrigan. Well taken. Wesley you now getting the mole on here. Smith has it at the tail. Stevens looks to get it. Still moving forward. Wesley well, need to be careful they don't turn it over here. And they do. They just left it in there that fraction of a second too long. So now Sean Rennington is playing nine for Gary Owen. And Neely Cronin has gone to ten. Rennington now picks to Cronin. To Fitz, the captain. To Hogan. Hogan's tracked by Malloy. Put to deck. Rennington again. Hits Usp. Usp rides the first tackle. Then is put to ground by the second tackler. Oh, Carson is really on Wesley here. Rennington made a bit of a meal of that, but won his penalty. And indicates for the posts. Rennington himself will have a shot here. But five minutes gone off Tom Lark's yellow card, so Wesley's still down to 14 for five more minutes. Sneaks it inside the left upright. 
and Gary Owen have extended out their lead to 8 points, 22 points to 14 here in Donnybrook with 10 gone in the second half. Billy Corrigan is now called ashore and Sam Pym is on, so both Pym brothers are now on in the row. Cassidy sends it deep. It's collected by the eight. Donica Byrne brings it to the 22. Gary, of course, still under 22. Rendonson now getting ready for a box. Sends it downfield. Randles is underneath this. Baying crowd from the Gary Owen fans of the fire. Terrace. Randleson is there. Wesley has re-secured it. Wesley just need to get a patch of ball together now. Because they've been defending for long periods at the end of that second half. They just need to retain ball and be comfortable with ball for a little bit. Benny Stevens has no options. As, as Gary Owen shoot out of the line, he's going to be turned here possibly. Referee says it's fair. Cassidy has it. Cassidy again to Malloy. Malloy bounces. Steps inside, but he's met by attacker straight away. Stevens to Cassidy. Cassidy on Murphy. Stephen Smith has it. Spins out of the first tackle. Sam Pins straight into the action. Cassidy now plays it behind to Malloy. Malloy tries to ride the first tackle. But it's a press D and it pins him back. Where's he come back a couple of yards here? Sam Pim now looks to straighten up and move it forward. Cassidy in behind. Steps inside as Murphy steps inside the second to Josh Pim on support. Well, Bays of offside from the home fans here, but I don't think so. Wesley will come back down the blind here shortly. And it's a penalty. Not supporting his own weight, body weight there. For Gary Owens, Darren McCarthy, who's not long into the park. As you have no option here, but to go to the line, I would imagine. Cassidy sends it down six, seven yards from the Gary Owen line. So in the pack in this lineup, we have Sam Pym and David Mateer, who are just on the park. And of course, Wesley playing without a full back at the moment. Taken in the middle by Mateer. Where's he look to get the ball on? Ball is there. Where's he mauler forward? They have advantage. Carson's arm is out. They're still going. Stephen Smith still has it. He's on the five. Where's he still have advantage here? Sam Pym chopped down straight away. Smith around the corner again to Sam Pym. Sam passed the first tackle, climbs in on it. Now it's Josh Pym. Takes him on. Where's he still at that five meter line? Back to Harry Noonan. Takes two to bring Harry down. Smith, dummies, goes himself. Still on his feet, just inside the five. Where's he again? Is the advantage still there? Out the backs. Cassidy, Malloy, steps inside, steps inside, two, steps inside, three, he's still going, it takes three to bring him down two yards from the line, and it's a penalty, surely we'll see a card here for Gary Owen, and we do, yellow card for the number eight, of Gary Owen, Donica Byrne, and Tom Norrick is now back on the park, so the advantage is switched. Wesley with 15, Gary Owen with 14. As Donica Byrne trots us to the stand to take his 10 minute reprieve. What will Wesley do here? Looks like it's gonna be a pick and go. 
As I said, the numerical advantage is now flipped. Gleason batters it up first. Then we go short side with Pim. Gary Owen come offside. Now it's Sam Pim. It's over, it's turned over. Gary Owen have it. Where's he got sloppy in the base of the rook? Shorty will boot it downtown. Just get it out of here. Rennison boots it downtown. Lark is at the touchline. It won't make touch. Lark moves it back in field. Lark has it now himself. Will face says go the other way. Oh, why does he just need to be more decisive in their actions here? Stevens digs it out to Cassidy. Cassidy plays it in behind to Pim. Pim goes for a kick himself. Ricochets off a Gary Owen player. Why does he still have it? Knock on by Gary Owen. Why he'll have the scrum? Lots of time left in the second half. Only 54 on the clock here in the stadium. 56 on ours, we don't know which is right. But Gary Owen now getting some treatment. Maybe being a bit clever with that same bin clock. And could you blame them? Again, folks, while there's a bit of running repairs to the Gary Owen players here, it would be greatly appreciated if you could give us a follow. So hit that bell if you're watching on a mobile phone or on a laptop or a computer, as it does help us bring these streams to you for free every week. And also our highlights during the week. You'll be notified when the highlights go up on a Monday morning. You'll get a little notification to say they're live. So, as we approach a half an hour left here in Donnybrook, it is Gary Owen 22, Wesley 14. Gary Owen scoring 20 unanswered points at the end of the second half and started of the, sorry, end of the first half, started the second half. So Wesley now have had a little bit better look over the last three or four minutes, but need to work on retaining that ball a little bit better. Scrum on the terrace side. Stevens puts it in. Will Fay has it at the base at his feet. Where's he looking for a penalty? Referee says use it. It's out to Cassidy. To Malloy. Malloy spots a half gap. Doesn't quite get through. Where's he coming back down the short side? To Lark. It's knocked on by a Gary Owen player, but where's he still have it? This time it's Will Fay. Will Fay still going with the ball. I can remember his great run in that last league game here in March. It's a knock on in contact by Wesley. Renanson kicks the ball away downfield. Malloy is chasing it. Can he keep it in field? He cannot. It's a 50 22. Absolutely huge kick there by Renanson. The minute it was turned over, he, had, he did not think about anything else by getting it downfield and got a coin bounce as well. But sometimes you got to risk it to get the reward. Knocked on by Faye, but he's going to get pulled back. Wesley now will have another scrum to defend inside their 22.
And again, more running repairs here by Gary Owen. And old Wesley. So we have about 25 left on the clock. It's Gary Owen 22, Wesley 14. And for those of you who weren't with us at the half time, the half time score from Toman Park was Shannon 8, Belvedere 20. And the half time from Dublin in Belfast in the relegation playoff final, Queens 24, Banbridge 5. Again, the 1A scores I'm trying to find here. But I cannot. And I believe Leinster are 28 21 up. Kieran Frawley having scored a couple of tries too. All right, we're back underway here. Renanson puts in. To, straight towards a 12 to Fitzgerald. Out to Cronin. Great tackle there by Lark. Knock on. It's completely missed by the touch judge and the referee. Intercepted by Sam Pym. Sam Pym moves downfield. Wesley are there. Knock on by Gary Owen. Referee says, play all those numbers are wide if he can move it. A wide now to uh, Owen Deegan. Plays it inside to Randalls. Randalls cuts through. Back to Ben Stevens. The inside pass to Sam Pym. Sam Pym is inside the 22. Wesley still have it. To Cassidy. Cassidy in behind to Randalls. Randalls sidles through the first tackle. Ball is there. Ben Stevens should get it. Tom Lark now back at his feet, rejoining play. Cronin Gleeson has it in midfield. There's numbers here. Why does he need to use it quickly? No, it's picked. They got through the middle. Gleeson's on his own. He needs to be careful. He doesn't get isolated here. Cassidy plays it short. Ball is there to Josh Pym. Josh Pym bounces back inside. Two Gary Owen men on him. Sam Pym at first receiver. Sam carries. Stevens can't get the ball. Appealing to Carson. Where's he still have it? Cassidy out the back door. He's got a gap. He's got an alley. And he makes it there. Takes a half cap, gets the alley, and gets over the line. Great ball retention by Wesley, deserved after that, that breakout interception in the 22 by Sam Pym. Retained ball, worked hard, and eventually the gap opened for him, and over went Owen Deegan. Cassidy now with the conversion to come into the sun. Chase is a great chase, but he gets it over the chaser and gets it over the bar. And it's now a one point game here in Donnybrook. And a nice bit of sportsmanship there by Oren McNulty, tap on the back to uh, Cassidy saying I almost had you and he did too oh, 
So carry on with the kickoff. Gathered by Owen Murphy. And behind to Cassidy. Cassidy now has to go and rock over himself. Sam Pym playing clean up. Ben Stevens marshalling the forwards. He wants a box, he calls them in to give him a caterpillar. Down Hogan's throat. Hogan's been dangerous on the counter attack all day. And off he, go, he, off he goes again. Neely Cronin plays it short to Woods. Jack Delaney there was calling a little bit of no man's land, but he got out of it. Haddon back on. Haddon's met straight away by Josh Pym. Crawls over the tackle. Cronin looks to take the gap himself. It's not there. Renanson out to Woods to Fitz, the captain. Fitz gets tangled up on that far touchline. Yusp carries in his met straight away. Renanson again to Cronin. Cronin plays Haddon. Haddon's put down straight away by Pym. They've had a ding-dong battle all day. Daly now takes it in. Almost turned over. Woods looks to take the inside shoulder. It's not quite there this time. Knock on by Gary Oldrick. Freaks this play on. Colin Hogan steps inside. Tackle's made. Pym is looking for a jackal again. It's not there. Cronin plays it in behind. It's a huge gap for Fitzgerald. What's he going to do? Lark with the tackle. Referee says play on. Where's he need to get a D line going here? Where's he going hunting? And Owen McNulty goes in and gets the try down the tram line side. The referee gives the penalty. That was a little bit off the cuff there. Things broke down in both D in attack, but Gary Owen just worked it out wide where there was space. Renan still get ready with the conversion here. <clears throat> That's Fitzgerald. Is called ashore along with Kean Hurley for Gary Owen. Brennanson with the kick. Just wide. Very similar to the last kick, which curled in this time. He wasn't so lucky. So it's a six point game here with 15 minutes left in Donnybrook. Gary Owen, 27, Owen Wesley, 21. And of course, Gary Owen now back to 15, their yellow card is over. Renanson takes it deep, sends it with a huge, huge kick back, but it's taken by Lark. Lark now surveys what's in front of him, looks to come inside. Renanson makes the tackle. Oh, wow! Oh, my word! Gary Owen hanging out of Stevenson, but referee says no.
And behind it's a huge hit. Big carry there by Jack Oliver who's just on the park. Hogan now, he's isolated Lark with a great tackle. He's in touch. Lark again with another great tackle. To send Gordon Wood into touch. Just running repairs here to Nathan Randalls, who's down, just getting looked at. I definitely think Wesley can feel aggrieved about that. Pass by Ben Stevens with the Gary Owen player hanging out of him coming out of the rook. But Wesley needs to just go and create their own look here. Get this line out and start retaining ball again. Okay, here we go. First line of the day for Kieran O'Shea. Plays it great to our captain Pim at the tail. Gleason to Josh Pim. It's a rewind now to Sam. In behind him, Malloy. Ball knocks on. Kieran O'Shea in on that one. To be fair, you can't let those ones drop. You never know where it'll bounce. More substitutions here for Owezi as Sam Kenny comes on. And Harry Noonan's going to make way for him. So now we have O'Shea, Sam Kenny, and Cronin Gleason in the front row. David Moitier and Ruben Pym in the second row. Josh Pym at six, Will Fay at seven, and Sam Pym at eight in the Wesley pack. Brennanson now takes it out. Cronin dummies, late double pass. Forward. Fly kick downfield there by Fitz. Those you hear underneath me is another Gary Owen player coming off. Max Klein, the hooker, is coming off after a two-try performance today. Keith Kavner now on for Ben Stevenson. Kavner takes it off Pim. It's short. Lark just gets held up. Where's your little bit narrow here? They need to work a little bit wider. It's turned over by Hadden, it looks like, but no, where's the other back again? And it's Owen Deegan. Josh Pym looks to go himself. Needs to be careful, he doesn't get isolated. Cabinet, Cassidy in behind to Malloy. Malloy out wide to Murphy. Ball is there. <clears throat> Sam Pym. Sam then moves in. He's hit by a thunderous tackle by Daly. Short, short pass to Josh Pym. Josh is not held, he goes again. Oh, whoa, whoa. Knock on by Gary Owen. I'm not sure what Kavner was thinking about there. Or sorry, Keith Kavner was thinking about there. But it was almost an interception for a try. Wesley well, just need to focus on retaining ball here and not trying anything too risky. As we enter the last 10 minutes of this game, Wesley trading by six points to Gary Owen. To be fair, Gary Owen have had more possession in this half. They've had a bit of rub of the green as well. Wesley just need to get back into that Gary Owen 22 because anytime they've been there today, they've had great success. Hey, 
again, we've more players coming off for Gary Owen. It looks like JJ O'Neill has gone on. And off comes Gordon Wood. So I think the Gary Owen bench is on now. There's nobody left on their bench. Okay, as Keith Kavanagh gets us back underway here. The Wesley Scrum. Malloy steps in at 10 on the blind side. Plays Cassidy. Cassidy. Out to Murphy. Murphy kicks through. Oh, the ball just to give him a bounce. But again, that's the spark that Wesley need to see. Maybe that can ignite something in attack. Nice little bit of inventiveness late in this game here by Wesley. Gary Owen packs slow to get back there. Looking maybe a little bit tired. Wesley needs to keep the tempo high and see what can happen. Dean Fanning now with the put in here. Taken at the front by Yusp, who's had a phenomenal game for Gary Owen. Steenson now will come in for the box. Gary Owen have tied it in. No, not quite yet. They're looking to play out Yusp. Carries. Now he'll come. Lark and Murphy are deep. Murphy has it, plays it into Lark. Lark to Randalls. Randalls over to Malloy. Malloy with a bit of space, steps over the first tackle. Malloy with space is a dangerous, very dangerous face to say. Malloy is still going. He's still in his feet. He's into the 22. Where is he looking for it? Gosh, they've given away a penalty. Well, Malloy had great support in the inside there, but they just slightly outran him. Very, very unlucky. But Wesley can go again, I'm sure. And a result in from Dublin, it is. Bambridge 52, sorry, Bambridge 17, Queens 59. About eight or nine minutes left here in Donnybrook. And it's a six point lead for Gary Owen. It's taken. At the front. Wesley fly off the line. Tackle behind the gain line there. Ball is there, Carson says. It's going to be a kick downfield. Oh, it's a sp spiral bomb. Well, well taken care of there by Randalls. Lark has bodies would be off to go to the middle. Support is there. Ball is back. Great spiral bomb there by Neely Cronin. Cassidy kicks up field. Hogan surveys it. He's got it. Counter is coming. He looks to kick to the corner. He's totally out of line. That's going to run all the way deep. And we're going to come back for a scrum just inside the halfway. positioning that's an awful positioning Dermot Blake needs to watch where that spot was on the touchline all right we're back at it Wesley with the ball every single one of their backs is inside the scrum on the terrace side and Gary Owen with Five up and only Hogan deep. Has to be dug out. Ball spins out. It's picked up by Daly. 
Daly using the forearm friend there, referee might bring that. Or does he need to get back and get set? Callum Hogan fends off the first tackler. Renanson out. Carried by Darren McCarthy. Geronimo Yusp again with the ball, taking it in. Carried by Jack Oliver. Jack Oliver's inside the 22. Neely Cronin at 10, plays it in behind. To McNulty, Daly up the wing, back inside. It's picked up by the captain, Prim. Wesley have it here. They've actually a number out wide if they can move it, but it's got to be kicked to safety by Lark. I'm not saying the game is slipping from all Wesley, but with every minute that ticks by, it's going to be more and more difficult to come back, especially when you're playing down in the 22. Of course, Gary Owen now with more players down, getting a breather. Okay, we'll hear a quick word from our sponsor while there's some treatment going on on the pitch. The new online mortgage portal from PTSB will get you moving. Start your application, track your progress, and talk to us when you need us. Bringing the best of technology and our people together for a mortgage experience that works for you. PTSB, all together more human. Okay, we're back and it's line out time. So it's Gary Owen with the put in here on the 22. It's stolen by Moitier up in the air. Sam Kenny grabs it. Now Wesley, you've got to work at 80 meters if they're going to score here. Cassidy lays it in behind to Malloy. Malloy out wide to Murphy. Murphy the speedster. Still on his feet, but moves backwards. He's on his knees, he must release him. Gary Owen sitting with two deep. Cassidy almost threw him below in his inside, but he just couldn't free his hands. Sam Pym now. And behind, oh, that's another great pass. Randalls is in there. We've Ruben Pym on the sideline, stand side as well here. Where's he now just working it side to side? Gary Owen happy to defend down here, saying you've got to do the work, lads. Cassidy trying it, clawing his way out of the 22. Still have it. Lark. Gary Owen just happy to have a blue wall and make Wesley find a hole in it. Cronin Gleeson carries over the tackler. Wesley need to move the ball quicker. Cassidy inside the lark. They've been looking for that hole for the last minute or so. It's there now. Oh, offside surely. Referee says no play on. And it's turned over. This could be the name of the coffin for Wesley. McNulty steps inside. Can he free his hands? Yes, he can. It's a Gary Owen try. Not sure who scored that Gary Owen try. I believe it's the player without a number on his back. So I'm going to give it to JJ O'Neill. Well, 
with a conversion to come here. It's a touchline conversion by Steenson. Sorry, Renanson. Renanson swings it in, it's just wide. About three minutes left here in Donnybrook. And it's a 11 point lead for Gary Owen. Could we have another nice game on our hands? That most unlikely and likely of comebacks with just a kick at the end that was missed. Who knows, this team will definitely try for it anyway. Cassidy sends it up, gathered by Gary Owen. Getting very messy at the back of that rook, and it's a penalty. Bit of frustrations and tempers boiling over. We don't want to see this here today. Carson's in the middle of it, trying to break it up. Sam Pym hobbles out of that one. Bit of handbags, bit of pushing and shoving, not the much, just a bit of frustration boiling over from the Wesley side. And of course, a few cat calls from our Gary Owen fans on the fire terrace. You can't blame them, it's been their day. They're fully deserving of their lead so far. And that's it, full time. Gary Owen, 32, Old Wesley, 21. Not to be again for Old Wesley in the AIL playoff semi-finals. It's been a phenomenal turnaround for this team this year, having come from almost the bottom of the table, definitely the bottom three or four on the table, all the way back up to playoff contention. Gary Owen, the better side on the day. We wish them well. They will be at home next week to take on Old Belvedere, who've, over, who've overcome Shannon 46 points to eight. I've been Tom O'Brien. I thank you for joining us all season with our streams uh, and uh, please do follow us and we'll have the highlights up on Monday. Again, we'll have to take this on the chin, move on and go again next year. Well done to Gary Owen, fully deserving the win. Folks, 